Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another quick video. All right, y'all, just back with this uh, little uh, review I wanted to do of uh, the Relentless documentary on ESPN. Uh, this was a just like a 20, 30 minute documentary on Terrence Crawford uh, leading up to his fight with Kell Brook this, uh, uh, this weekend. And um, I just wanted to do a little uh, piece on this one, man, just like a little review, because one thing that really keeps me and like I know like other hardcore fans interested in boxing is really good documentaries, you know, like really well shot documentaries, you know, like uh, all access and some of the ones from like HBO 24 seven and, you know, just other little side pieces. Like uh, if you look on Netflix, like uh, what was it? Counterpunch, you know, Counterpunch was a solid uh, documentary on uh, young and up and coming fighters. And like the way they're shot and the way they kind of delve into the lives of fighters, it kind of helps you see them in a different light. And uh, I think this is one of these documentaries that really did that. You know, I feel like it was well shot. It kind of brought a different look uh, to the table because, um, you know, we had Andre Ward narrating, but we didn't see Andre Ward. We just had it focused on Terrence Crawford, kind of like talking to him eye to eye. And, uh, you know, lately, you know, Terrence Crawford, he's been getting a lot of flack because of his choice of opponents at welterweight. You know, being on, um, you know, the uh, top ranked roster, it's kind of hard to get those uh, big fights in the uh, welterweight division on the PBC side. So um, uh, this one just kind of gives us a uh, delve into his uh, into his mindset, his mentality and uh, what he wants in a welterweight division as far as moving forward in his career. But um, it was a good piece. Like I said, um, kind of reminds me of why I always said that Terrence Crawford was a gifted fighter. You know, I was one of the ones I still am one of the ones that still want to see him fight better competition at welterweight. But watching this documentary, it really reminded me and helped me remember that. Yeah, this is one of those guys I said, you know, he has a gift. You know, he has he is a special fighter. And a couple of the notes I had here, I just jotted a little something down because um. Like I said, there were some points in here that kind of stuck out to me. He's like Terrence Crawford, his competitive spirit. You know, I, I was kind of glad they kind of delved into that, you know, kind of touched on um, his competitive, his competitive nature. You know, he's a fighter that doesn't necessarily like to see what the next man is doing, you know, but he still likes to compete. You know, he has that competitive nature in him where he likes to one up himself. You know, he always wants to do better than the last thing he did. That's why he's always moving up in weight and challenging himself and trying to, um, you know, capture these uh championships in three different three four different weight classes you know and uh, then you know just seeing him and Errol Spence have that eye to eye you know kind of uh amps me up again to want to see that fight you know and it, it really kind of hypes people up again to see them to try to size each other up and you know um Terrence he looked competitive you know Errol, Errol he's definitely competitive so when they kind of see each other eye to eye we know that's the fight they want so just kind of getting that reminder his uh competitive nature was kind of a good thing and um dance partners you know that was something uh that 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 stuck out to me and i think he realized that he needs fighters on his resume to really make him an all-time great you know because he said it himself he he still hasn't had that fight that's that's considered pound for pound best versus pound for pound best you know like leonard versus duran hearns versus Hagler. you know there hasn't been a fight on his resume like that you know like he said he's beat good fighters but he's gotten them out of there and he's beat them in such dominant fashion that He's considered the best fighter, but at the same time, they're good, but they're they're no longer what they used to be. You know, even I could say that, like guys like Postal and Ndongo, Gamboa, those type of guys like that, they were good, but after he dominated and beat them, they're no longer around because they, they weren't the pound-for-pound pound best type of fighters like, you know, like uh, Hearns, Hagler, Leonard, and Duran, you know. So he still did admit that, that he needs those type of fighters on his resume, and being at 147, sooner or later, he is going to meet up with those guys. And he did mention names like, you know, Danny Garcia. I guess he wants to get back at Danny Garcia because I think he beat him in the amateurs, right? And, you know, he went down the list like he wanted Ter uh, Terrence Crawford, wanted uh, Manny Pacquiao and then Errol Spence. So we we kind of see him with a little blueprint similar to Errol Spence. So hopefully we're going to get that and hopefully he can get that. You know, hopefully he can get to some point out of this contract and actually have that uh, have that blueprint uh, executed, you know. Uh, next thing I was just wanted to bring up was, you know, his abilities, his abilities and his accomplishments. You know, he just reminded me why I felt like he was always an exciting fighter. You know, uh, you know, he, he talked about being able to punch, box, go from orthodox to southpaw, uh, close out, um, close out fights. You know, he's on a seven fight knockout streak or stoppage streak, whatever. But, you know, he is one of those guys that he'll take risks every now and then, you know, he'll go in there and try to close the show. You know, he'll punch with you. He'll box with you. You know, he'll switch and make adjustments and just make it look like um, a thing of a thing of beauty sometimes, you know, so you got to give uh, Terrence Crawford credit there and, you know, accomplishments. Like I said, you know, he's 
four division world champion, uh, undisputed at junior welterweight. You know, so those are great accomplishments for him to get into the Hall of Fame. But at the same time, if he wants to get that legacy status, he needs these pound for pound best fights versus pound for pound best fights, which, like I said, we we we, we are in a division with a unified champion, Errol Spence, who's considered pound for pound best at welterweights, uh, one of the best pound for pound fighters. And he is the champion, number one guy at welterweight. So if they can get that fight on, that'll definitely be a fight that'll solidify his legacy. If he can get that fight and um, a fight with uh, Manny Pacquiao. So hopefully we get to that point. And uh, last but not least, one of the things that, one of the last things that stood out was uh, his uh, devotion to his family. You know, like he said, he fights for his family. You know, he does it for his, you know, his wife, kids, and his mother. And the fact that, you know, he never misses any of his child's events, you know, especially like wrestling. Like he said, he's never missed any of his kids' wrestling matches. You know, that lets you know that this is why he does it. You know, he has a time for work, but there's also time for, you know, family. There's always time for kids and there's always time to, you know, devote that time to them. It's not like always business with him. You know, he, he finds that line, which is a good thing. But uh, yeah, man, overall, I thought it was a good documentary. Like I said, um, the way it was shot, I felt like it was a nice new little touch. And it kind of makes you want to see it kind of makes you see eye to eye with the fighter and makes you really want to delve in more and wish this was like a three, four part, five, three, four, five part series, you know, like all access. But like I said, it makes you respect fighters more and more whenever they can really capture documentaries like this and they have good narration and just good cinematography. You know, all of that has to come into play to make something, you know, like this, um, to make something like this really work, you know, especially for boxing. You know, it makes you it helps you see that other side to the um, to the fighter, not just the guy in the ring. You know, because me, I love to see the behind the scenes, the training. And of course, the the home life of fighters and why they do it. You know, I love to hear those stories. But uh, yeah, guys, that's all I got on this one. Like I said, I just wanted to drop this little review on the uh, Relentless documentary. And I need to go back and check out the uh, Errol Spence versus uh, Danny Garcia. You know, that countdown on PBC. I'll probably do a little review on that one because, yeah, this welterweight division is popping, man. So be on the lookout for my Terrence Crawford uh, Kill Brook prediction. I'm going to drop that tomorrow. Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.